after Dr. King. Call yeah, yeah. Ryder Chris, who's been writing about universal basic income for 40 years. For 40 years. He's an author, he's a UBI advocate, and he's an educator. Let's give it up for Carl Whiter Crest. Thank you. I support UBI because it's wrong to come between anybody and the resources they need to survive. And that is exactly what we do in just about every country in the world today. Poverty doesn't just happen. People don't get themselves into poverty. Poverty is a lack of access to resources. The world is full of resources. The only reason you can lack access to the resources you need to survive is because somebody else controls them, whether it's an owner, whether it's a politburo, whether it's a bureaucracy, it doesn't matter who controls them if it's not you, and they say you can't have them unless what we do, you do what we say, you are not free. Freedom is independence. Is, in, is the power to say no to anybody who wants to give you orders. Yeah. But we've set up the world so it seems so natural that some people should just own the earth. And the rest of us, the rest of us, the 90%, the 99%, we all have to go to them to get our jobs or we have no resources to keep us alive. And we call out. We call that work. We act like there's no other kind. And the only thing work could possibly mean is going and taking orders from somebody who has more privileges than you do. <laughs> Working for yourselves has been impossible. It's been impossible since we kicked the peasants off the land and since we enclosed the commons. Work for yourself has been impossible since we abducted the slaves. Work for yourselves has been impossible since we killed the buffalo. And the freed slaves knew this at the end of the Civil War. That's why they asked for 40 acres and a mule. Unfortunately, their masters knew it too. That's why they didn't get it. Now, there's nothing wrong with a job. Jobs don't make you unfree. What makes you unfree is when somebody says, uh, when, 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 instead of saying, instead of, I, I want you to work for me, so I'm going to pay you enough that you'll want to work for me. That's fine. But when you starve them into submission, say, I'm going to take everything, I take all the resources. I didn't invent these resources. These resources were here before all of us, but this group of people, this tiny little privileged group of people, are going to take all the resources, and we're not going to share to anybody until you who have nothing provide services for those of us who already own everything. That's why when you control resources, you don't just control, get the control of the resources, you get control of other people. So the only thing you could possibly do to justify owning resources, when owning more resources than other people do, to have more, more access to resources, more control over the resources other people own, is to provide some sort of service for them. That's why we need to tax the owners of property. All property is made out of resources. Every single piece of property, even on the internet, all that stuff. You need a place to stand when you make the internet. You need energy to make that internet work. All property is made out of resources. And they'll tell you they paid for those resources. No, they paid the last guy that owned it. They didn't pay all of us who don't own any resources. If you want to take part of the earth that was here before you, you got to pay back. You provide a service. That's why you have to have taxes on resources and the redistribution has to be unconditional. But they'll say, they'll say, they'll say, well, that's, that's something for nothing. No, that gets us exactly backwards. The system we have now is something for nothing. Where yeah. people who own the earth don't pay anything to those of us who do. That's something for nothing. Where people have no, we, we, we pretend we're free because we got a choice of which one of these resource owners, these property owners we can work for. A choice of masters is not freedom. Choice of masters is independence. Choice of masters is the power to say no to anyone who would want to be your master. The way to establish that is to everybody get some of the value of the resources on this earth. Enough to live in dignity. Enough to survive. Enough that you don't have to work unless somebody makes it worth your while. Oh, but they will say, oh, those lazy workers won't work if you do that. Notice how they say that. They never say, it's always lazy workers. There's never cheap employers. Now, 
That's never said. So what we're doing, we were, what's really a dispute, when somebody offers a job and somebody else doesn't want it, that is a dispute about wages and working conditions. Everyone has their price, right? Yeah. So there's a good price, people will take it. Good wages, good working conditions. Someone will take that job. But, but we just call, if you don't say whatever the wage is, if you don't take it, you're a lazy worker. We never say cheap employers. It's like, it's where we're looking at a dispute and we're pretending it's not even a dispute. We're pretending only this side. We're deciding in a dispute and we're siding with the most privileged person. And we're morally judging the least, the weakest, the, the, the least powerful person, the, the most vulnerable person. We're morally judging them and leaving the privileged people beyond reproach as if they're not even a party to a dispute. That's the way the system works today. And that's based on a ridiculous assumption that the privileged people of the world, whether it's in government or whether it's in private resource ownership, get to judge everybody else. They get to judge the weak and the vulnerable. Say, you deserve to live, you don't. You go be homeless. You, you, go, uh, you go eat out of dumpsters or whatever you have to do to keep yourself alive. Uh, that is the ridiculous assumption that there's anyone who doesn't deserve the basic resource they need to survive. And then they'll do it on the self-serving assumption that even if you could say somebody doesn't deserve to survive, that the privileged people are capable and have the right to, dis to judge the unprivileged people to whether they deserve to survive. And those assumptions are self-serving and look how self-serving they are. And we practice, because the number one we thing we do to the poor to say, to say if you're truly needy is, are you willing to work for the rich? Are you willing to work for people who own property? That's what you gotta do to prove you're, you're, you're worthy. But that's so self-serving on the part of the privilege. Yet, for almost all of us, this is self-defeating. Because most of us don't have enough property that we can just hire people to work for us. The vast majority of us have to work. And by creating this situation where the more privileged get to block the less privileged and the resources they need to survive, we have created a situation where just about everybody has to work directly or indirectly for the wealthiest of us. And that creates this terrible work incentive problem. Oh, when they work in, when they talk about incentives, they only talk about what is the incentive for those lazy workers to work? Well, what about that incentive for those cheap employers? those cheap employers to pay good wages. And that doesn't affect, that doesn't just affect the people at the low end. You realize that 41 years ago, real per capita income was half of what it is now. That means we could all be working half as much and consuming the same. Or we could be working the same. Oh, sorry, we could consume the same and work half as much. Or we could cons uh, work as much and consume double. But most people are working just as much as their parents were 41 years ago. And they're consuming not anymore. We've had all this economic growth, all this automation in the past 40 years, and the benefits have all gone to the top 1%. Basic income is not just for those other people at the low end, it's for everybody who has no other choice but to work for a living. We have owed each other a basic income since we enclosed the commons, since we abducted the slaves, since we killed the buffalo. We all owe each other a basic income. That's why I'm marching today, and thank you for joining me. Who's next?